down. And welcome to the first series of the day. Now we do start with just best of threes here today. And then we do have best of fives in the semi-finals and finals. So we're going to cast two best of three round of eight matches. And then two best of five semi-finals followed by a best of five final. To the upper left-hand side of the map, our blue Protoss player is Creator. And he is going up against Nurcio, the Red Zerg player, to the bottom right-hand side of the map. So again, set to go, game number one of this best of three. And we're looking to see what we'll be getting up to here. People are asking if you can watch. Um, people are asking if you can watch the other game that's going on right now. Sin Sin, our Russian observer or caster, is going to be casting the entire thing. Uh, is going to be the casting the entire thing with, uh, or not the entire thing, but he's going to cast Petit Drucker versus DNS. So if you guys want to watch that, is on the Russian stream. We will have an account in the game, so we will be able to give you guys updates. That game is just now getting started. And then for our second series, we're going to focus on Euphemal versus Stefano, while Reynor versus Namshaw will take place over on our second screen. So, hopefully that's uh, all of the answers you need, and hopefully that's all the questions answered. I'm a little bit stressed out, because I got into the studio, I was like, you know what, I'm going to play a game of co-op before we go live the stream. So I started up this game of co-op, and you know, as far as I was aware, co-op games lasted like 20, 25 minutes, you know, around there. I've been having a good time over the last few days. Oh my god, this one took forever. And I was like, I was like 10 minutes before the stream was meant to start, I'm still playing, I'm like, oh my god. I was like, Jesus, so I had to put the stream live with no music on. Oh, I, I shouldn't have done anything, I shouldn't have played anything, I should have just sat here and waited. God damn it, I, uh, I stressed myself out, put myself on a timer. It was a little bit of a, a little bit of a frustration. Anyways, guys, as we were talking about, these are, of course, the playoffs. You win one matchup today and you get into the prize money. And of course, you win more than that, and you can keep on winning. We don't do a third place match, so third and fourth place will both just take home $50 each. And of course, second place $100, and first place taking home that $300 first place prize. So, all of that's uh, going to be going on here as we see the Stargate on the way up. And we're getting ready to go into this. Uh, the start of this uh, game. Honestly, nothing really too crazy in the very first few minutes. Stargate comes on through from Creators, his first tech of choice, and meanwhile we do see the third hatchery from Nurcio starting up. Link speed on the way out, really nothing too ridiculous at all to get things going. It's going to be seeing this probe coming in towards the upper left-hand side, pretending some minerals after going around the map and scouting throughout the early stages. There's the Adept here now to kind of take over that probe's duty of scouting, just threatening every now and then to maybe go in towards the base and actually get some damage done as we see Queen just laying a creep tumor as well, start connecting up the bases, same in the main base, connect up the bases, make it easier to defend, and as a Phoenix comes out, we're seeing the very standard Stargate play. The Phoenix first pushes that Overlord away, allows you to then get the Oracle while going into your next tech group without it being seen by the Overlord, which is nice, it's nice to be able to hide if you're going kind of Twilight Camp or Lone or Twilight Overlord at the same time. Gives you know a couple of different ideas as to what could, the follow-up could be. Although at this stage, PVZ is very predictable in general in terms of what the Protoss is going to do once they've gone Stargate with an Oracle behind it. I mean, very rarely do you see that sort of Twilight Council into Graves play, but nine times out of ten, it's going to be the Templar Archives, the Archons, the Charge, and all of that good stuff. So there's our Twilights coming on through here at the moment. A couple of gateways on the way up, and well, no chill. There's a few more drones on the way out right now. A couple of small crawlers are coming up. And obviously just starting to cover his mineral lines in terms of defense. Doesn't want to be caught off guard by an oracle. Doesn't want to take masses of damage in the early stages. Through just a very simple opening of one single oracle here. So just uh, kind of sit here. Do some of queens and jump on that oracle. Two queens is enough. But I mean, the oracle gets a couple of kills. So that will be it. And you can see with just the Twilight Council, the Resonating Glaives does start. So not the most common of choices, but a choice that is very, you know... It's, a, it's definitely one of the choices you can make. And this is why it's nice to push that Overlord away, because if the Phoenix sees, oh, the Overlord sees the Twilight Council coming down, and again, no Robo, then all of a sudden you can maybe start to figure out, okay, this is going to be Glaives, rather than, you know, I've got a little bit longer to prepare for an Archon drop or so. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, Glaives continue to be Chronobus, then some Adept Attack coming in with a Baneless coming up, though, Nurcio, he's already looking as though he's going to be fairly well prepared for this. As those few Zerglings come up to the top side, and a few adepts here just to the left side of the Nexus will be good to defend. 
and a couple of drums going down as you will see the Oracle coming off around and still looking for more damage. There's a lot of Lings on the way up. I mean, Nurture's just preparing well for this sort of timing at this stage, so he's getting ready for that. As you can see, one drone getting taken down already. There's the Oracle flies on it. So Oracle comes in for a quick kill. We are just going to be having Nurture with those few Zerglings off to the right side, just trying to see just what they can do. Again, another sentry warping in as well, but the top of four more gates being added in at the main base. Robo facility dropping down on the natural, and as the robo facility drops down, as that finishes up, it looks as though this is going to be a fairly aggressive follow up here, although that sentry. Yes, the shield battery keeps it pretty safe. A couple of probes brought into the fight as well, and then she will start to get some probe kills. Even just drain the sentry, or oh, the shield battery of energy can be nice for kind of a follow up a little bit later on. Well, the main attack's going to be over here with Visa Death. The creator has to start backing away. If we get rid of the Oracle, the Phoenix. Takes a little bit of damage as well. And we are going to see those adepts shading up in towards the natural expansion and maybe just see what else they can do. Looking for some more damage here. They cancel their shade, the Lings and Banes. A little bit too scary there. And we do see Creator just going to have to back away off over to the left hand side again. Now just going to be seeing the Lings coming all the way up to the top side. And well, this is the counter-attack now where the shield barrier already half health or half energy. It is kind of like, you know, a little bit less useful. It isn't going to be able to do as much here now. That means these things will probably be doing that a little bit more quickly. So, here we go. The adept get will didn't help out, but I mean, this is still a lot of probes going down because there are no units up to the top side of this here. While the adepts clean out on the south, eight workers go down on the northern side of this base. And that's already a good amount of damage dealt here as Nurcio. But now he's making that switch into Hydralisk. A few extra gates still just finishing up here. That does take our Pro player up to uh, 8 in total. 9 in total, actually. And he's still making a lot of adapt. He's actually walking them in aggressively on the left-hand side of the map. Another counter-attack though, and more probes going down. And Adept defensively goes down as well. And this is looking as though Creator's just going to go all or nothing across the map now. So he's just going to keep on pushing here. And does Nurcio have enough to defend? I kind of feel like he might not. He lost a lot of links trying to attack onto that third base before. And oh, well, Bailey's obviously going to make a big difference if they connect well enough. That was a good start for Nurgio, but he needs so much more. Five more Banes walking in. Now another six start up. So close, but wow, he really needs as much as he can. He needs time to get more units out to make use of the three bases and the economy advantage which he's gained for himself in the last few minutes. And of course, he's coming down in the wings. Let's play away to the top side. Not sure what Nurgio was hoping to gain from that there. He's going to be seen straight to continue to push forwards. Hatchery also in some trouble now. Bane's going to move forward as well. Good force fields blocking those out. A lot of sentries, but they're running low on energy. And as the sentries run out of energy, they're not going to be as useful in the fight as they were previously. You know, the sentries really are here for force fields, but not much else. He is going to get rid of this hatchery. And that's going to hurt Nurtio. He's now just going to struggle straight up in terms of production. This one missile attack about to finish, and he's still a strong army of army to Nurtio. If he had more Hydras, I think, though, actually, he only has a couple of Hydras, and that means he might not have enough to really make this work. And as you see those Banes rolling in, the splits are good enough here for Creator to keep enough attempts alive, and then uh, is still trying to pour out units, but again, after losing the Hatchery, does he really have enough production? He gets rid of the War Prism, but maybe just the move that comes in way too late into the fight, because getting rid of the War Prism shuts down War Prism, but when there's already too much here, does it really matter? Step shit on top of the Queen's Days, are going to be trapped as well now. We're going to see those Queen's come Go on down. Yeah, just working their way through them. The sentries and the faculty added some help. The Phoenix is going to clean up now and then as well to minimize the damage. Although that said, Nurtio is going to clean this up. That Warp Prism kill does turn out to be very useful. Even the Phoenix going down, Nurtio will hold on. Creator already has a third base up though, albeit still down on workers. He can now rebuild workers and honestly, surely just a follow up attack is going to be somewhat deadly here as Nurtio has to focus up on rebuilding the hatchery and economy rather than building units to defend against what is going to be consistent unit production out of the Protoss player. So Nurture holds, he doesn't die right here, but of course he didn't really end up in a great position from it. We're going to be seeing double expansion from Nurture, realizing he's behind, he has to do something to get back in. We're going to be seeing Creator, I mean he's already warped in a bunch of Adepts, he's added a couple of sentries too, so it's a similar attack from him. He's not getting, you know, making this any better for himself. He's continuing to just say, okay, well, I'm just going to go for depths and force fields. That said, there isn't a lot of force fields available here. And these three balance to the side, if they roll in and hit this mineral line, if they can take down those probes, maybe there is just about enough economy taken down here to make this work out. Those probes are going to start splitting. No chance to decide just where he puts the balance because every single bane connection is going to be so vital to maximize damage. Eight workers killed. Is that going to be enough? Oh, a few hydras in the front are on their own. Nurture, I don't think he has Banes at home. Without Banes at home, he's actually just losing drones himself. Confirmed between bases. 
Uh, I just don't think you fight this as Ling Hydra Queen. Sure, you need the basins as well. He is going to get the Wolf Prison perhaps with the Hydras in the background. He's going to get the Prison again, which again gives him some time, but I mean, once more I look at this army, I just don't see a way he cleans it up unless he somehow gets the Bayman's in here in the next few moments. They're starting to morph in. There's the Depths are moving forward, Queen from the high ground. The Depths are going to commit. I mean, the Bayman's are morphing. If they finish morphing, these Depths are all clumped up around them. And there's a possibility here. There's a way that he does this. The Bayman's explosions are really huge. He's losing so many drones. But he's going to hold on yet again. And this time, he holds on with a little bit more of an army to actually work with beyond this. Necho. Now he needs to drone up a little bit, but once he drones up a little bit, his army again is already standing strong. He has plus one melee now, plus one missiles as well. Was created just a little bit too eager, shading on top of these banelins as they were morphing in. You can't blame him because God, Necho was not in a good position, but now you look at this and you have to start wondering, is creator going to fall behind with the lack of upgrades in this game? This is a little bit crazy. You can see the income advantage, which I'm just showing on the screen, is definitely in Creator's favor. But as Nurture gets this base saturated, it should come out to be a little bit more even. Remember, he has bottom left right now as well, which is just straight up extra lava. And that's all he needs it to be. A little bit more lava production. He sees the War Prism right now, so he knows this attack is coming around this side. He needs to make sure he doesn't lose a couple of Hydras at the start of this, like he did last time around. A few Bainlands walking in. Nurture is going to have to build absolutely everything possible here to be able to hold on. Remember, he just had to spend time droning. As he had to spend time droning, he wasn't able to make units. So these Bane have to connect magnificently. The first war troops look good, though, to buy some time. But when the end, the Bane sneak through, and all of the sentries are going to go down. He doesn't quite find the prison, but it's so low in the upper left side that maybe there's a way. Because, again, without reinforcements here on the front lines, Nurture's reinforcement stream on in, and Creator has to type out GG. Nurture takes game number one of this. Best of three. Wow. What the hell did we just watch? And for the free month for resub, how you doing? Thanks so much for the free months of resubscribing. Hope you're having a good one. Thanks for the support. To the bottom right hand side, our blue zig player, it is Nurture. Going up against the Red Protoss to the top left-hand side of the map, Creator. Okay, so getting into game number two and looking to see what will happen here as we go into this. It's, uh, well, Creator who really dictated the way that game number one went up until the point where he lost because he really was the guy who kind of forced the issue in a position where he really wasn't having that great of a time at all. Now, as this is going on, guys, sorry we didn't actually show this before, but we do have uh, DNS and Drogo still ongoing in game number one. DNS has the advantage right now. 200 to 175 supply in a Phoenix versus Phoenix fight. It's looking pretty good for DNS. And they're both still making Phoenix with upgrades in favor of DNS as well. So, DNS looking very good in the first game uh, right now against Petit Drogo. That PvP continuing over the next few minutes, and we'll give you guys any updates as scores come in and all the rest of it. Hatch, gas, and pool here from Nurture in these early stages. So he is going to be opening up with a little bit of... a little bit of uh, a standard one once again. Nothing really beyond expectations or anything along those lines. Just what we very well know is a very simple way to open with. So. Yeah, let's see how this side goes. Simon X called about halfway done. Mex is about halfway done as well, and the probe is going to come over and pop that assimilator on the left side. The hatch comes down here from Nurture as well, here on Acid Plant. Compared to Catalyst, it's one of those maps with a few more attack paths on. It's uh, still easy enough to take the three to four bases. You can definitely see some long games in this one, but it's also one of the maps where it's a little bit more difficult at certain times to kind of hold base. It's kind of weird, like, you can definitely take more of a set back for base on uh, Catalyst than you can on Master Plant. We'll see how the players approach it. We'll see what they do over the next few moments. Music's a bit too loud, wow. Really? That's crazy. I think I haven't turned my microphone up properly then or something. Actually, my mic's just not going as loud as it should be at all. What on earth is going on? Oh, I'm having so many mic issues the last couple of days. I think it's just my microphone's not loud enough, guys. Oh, I really don't know why, though. 
I actually have absolutely no reason for that to be the case. Maybe that's a little bit better. Let me know. Hopefully it's a little bit uh, better now. Yeah, sorry. It's uh, my mic's just... Yesterday my mic's just stopped working on one of my inputs, which is really concerning. So, huh. Anyways, we'll uh, hopefully have that fixed up. As we are going to be seeing. This Oracle on the way out and Creator just hunting down the first Overlord here already. Phoenix trying to take this Overlord down. Might have overdone it on the mic volume. I mean, I can turn it down a tiny amount as well. It should be it should be about right. It's looking like it's a bit more normal than what it was, so hopefully it's a little bit better. Sorry for that, guys. Like I said yesterday, my mic input just sort of broke, so I had to switch inputs, and the settings aren't exactly the same, so I imagine it's just something along those lines which is causing the issue. Well, thanks for letting me know. Can't fix it unless we know it's an issue. We do see a few zircons of nurture here moving forwards, and we are going to see a couple of adepts. Alrighty, yeah, once again, the Twilight Council follow-up. So it looks like Creator is just going to kind of go into the very same kind of follow-up here. And we are going to be having the Lair on the Natural Expansion, currently building up Queen. Targeting down that Oracle, getting some hits, and actually now the Spore Crawler as well. So even though the Phoenix comes in to lift it, it pushes the Oracle away quite quickly. The target fire actually going quite a long way to help out. And there is indeed the Resonating Glaives, the Robo Facility as well. More extractors coming in from Nergio 2 on this natural expansion. So, yeah, another couple of uh, extractors are getting set up here as we do see the beta nest also coming down. And, uh, yeah, just this Phoenix just scouting around and seeing what else is happening. For the next few moments, I mean, it's kind of all eyes on Creator, right? As he takes a Nexus with this Resonating Glaives finishing, it definitely looks like he could become the aggressor once again. Nurture is again making a good swallow of Zerglings to make sure he should have the units to kind of fight against this. And just as this is happening, you guys, very quickly in the PvP, right now DNS is winning a massive Phoenix on Phoenix fight, or at least he was winning a massive Phoenix on Phoenix fight, but now it's kind of going the wrong way. Wow, Jorgo actually just turned that around the last couple of seconds. And DNS leads on economy, but trails an army. And he doesn't even have a bank anymore, so Drogo may have just turned that one around over in the PvP, which is currently ongoing. But back to the PvZ, because we do see Creator is coming across the map with these Adepts, so here we go. Pushing forwards, and we are going to see these Adepts, seeing what they can do. I mean, Dro and then she has got, like, you know, three Banes coming through, he's got more Lings coming out. So these drones that are just running around trying to stay safe, now chased by an Oracle. The Lings will come in, they're going to look for the Saran, a couple of Banes connecting would be amazing to help out with that. And they will get some decent connections there as the Shade comes over here, but more Lings pouring on in. Able to surround, and they are going to be able to uh, get the rest of these Adepts. So more Adepts falling here in the end. Adepts going down, and this is a much cleaner, uh, a much kind of cleaner kind of engagement or tidy up from Nurture than the last time over. Obviously, Creator going to follow up differently. He doesn't follow up with a mass sort of Adept play himself. Uh, he goes in towards the Immortal and the plus one upgrade, which is very different to last time. But this isn't so different to last time. Nurture arrives with some Zerglings, and because there isn't Adepts here, this time Nurture's counter-attack's going to get quite a lot done. Four, five, six workers down. That sentry is in a lot of trouble. The shield battery has already fallen, and really, this is just looking very concerning. A few Adepts make it into the main base, though, through the Wolpism, so some damage will come down. But obviously, Creator's starting to lose the third Nexus. That is a massive issue. So ne third Nexus starts to fall. I mean, yes, five drones were lost, but eight probes were lost too, and this Nexus might just be saved, but it's going to be a massive target for later in the game as well. They actually still have some Adepts over here causing some issues. That uh, Warpism is now going to get taken down, but the Adepts still causing some lost mining time towards the end of this year, as we are going to see those Adepts once more getting surrounded by the Lings and the Hiders and falling once again. Looks as though Nurture has this game number two under control, much more so than he had in game number one at least, so... Feeling good for him, but of course it's a different follow-up from Creator, so we'll see if Nurture can deal with this this time around. This time it's more of a macro-focused play as we see the bailing speed about to finish up. Hydra speed not here yet. Nurture's still brave enough to wander in towards the center of the map with the few Hydralists that he has, though. Feeling as though he can maybe make something happen if he starts to get across the map here over the next couple of moments. So, Nurture heading up towards the upper side of the map, but then decides not to go too much further. Again, without Hydra speed, it's a very risky play, so... Backs off here just for the moment, and uh, gets ready for the next stage of this. Thank you so much, Karen. How are you doing, mate? Thank you for the 27-month resub. SC2 Pogchamp. Big resub coming in. We had a lot of big resubs yesterday. 
And that's another big one right there today for the 27 months. Dude, thank you so much for the 27 months. Appreciate the love. Thank you for the support. Appreciate it. You're going to see that hallucinated phoenix popping out, and we are going to be having it coming across down towards the south side of the map here. So, hallucination coming down to the south is going to be seeing a couple of evolution chambers from Nurtio starting up behind this hatchery. A fourth base from Nurtio starting up as well. And then a little change in just sat there, the Adept moving forwards too, and we do have the Phoenix of Creator just coming down the right side also. As we do have just a few more Hydras on the way out right now. There is the Storm upgrade being currently uh, Corona boosted out by Creator, so getting himself that Storm ASAP here. Obviously the sooner he has Storm, the better time he's going to have against this very kind of low health mid-tier army in terms of the units that are out. Ling Bane Hydra is one of those compositions that really revolves on its amount of numbers rather than its actual value of each particular unit. But of course the issue with that sort of composition always will be the fact that splash damage will be so good against it, Colossus are so good against it once they get up into numbers, you know, Storms are so good against it, and that's why you have to rely on good control and surrounding and coming in from different angles to make it work out as we are good to be seen. Nature yeah, putting the Overseer into Overseer mode actually allows him to detect just that little bit further and see just that little bit further, allows him to actually come through and he's going to be able to uh, engage up the high ground with that little bit of extra vision. So that definitely does help him out. In a moment or two of calmness, by the way, though, it looks as though DNS, and there it is, has just taken game number one against Petit Drogo. So DNS goes 1-0 up in that best of three. And that's just a quick update there. Well, he was losing that last fight. It's because he was actually transitioning into carriers and archons. So he didn't necessarily have the Phoenix numbers. But he did have a ground army to push on through with, essentially, in the near future. And that's what happened for him to take that game number one. Well, going to be seeing these uh, few extra Banes continue to morph on in. It looks as though this fourth base is already in just a little bit of trouble. You can see the Archon is uh, going to get taken down. So Archon already dropping. The Zealot at the front going down as well. As you're going to see another couple of Zealots coming forwards. Ling's going to take the charge too. Meanwhile, Nurture's on the right-hand side. And these Banes are actually going to crash into the Nexus. That's a bit of miscontrol. He really could have chased down so many of these probes. I don't like this for Nurture. I don't think he's done enough. The Hydra's on the left side haven't done as much as they maybe could have done either. Just sort of sat there AFK and... Definitely not the best of fights of Nurture compared to what this could have been. If he chased all of those probes, he really could have killed so much more. Wow, I mean, imagine you kill 20 workers here. This game looks so different compared to uh, this next one as we get ready to uh, go into this. More Bane is currently just morphing in. And we are going to be seeing... I mean, the, the crazy thing is he doesn't just throw the Banes against the Nexus. He throws them against the Nexus and he doesn't get the kill on the Nexus. Which, of course, is a massive loss for him. Well, here we go. Ling's are going to fast around and Immortal get started here in wave two of this attack. I just trying to come up this ramp, but there's so many Immortals there. Force fields are good, but now the sentry's starting to go down, so less force fields available. Nurture's starting to break through on the left-hand side. It's on the right-hand side as well. Some Banes this time will make it through to the Mineral Line. They will connect, and they will take down a bunch of extra workers. This time, worker count is dropping, and this time it feels as though there's been more progress made by Nurture with the attack. Although still standing strong, Creator still has Immortals. He still has an economy of over 60 probes. He can still play this. Nitro going into Spire, but he doesn't really have the money right now to actually make use of it. He can't actually afford Mutalisks at the moment. So that is going to be a bit of an issue for him. As we do see these uh, units of our Zerg player. Now going to collect together off over to the right hand side. Potential to attack up this ramp and in towards this... Uh, they see it yet again. I mean, it's so low that at this stage, I think you just have to go for it, right? I mean, it's on, what, 500-ish health? I mean, even if you can't quite get the kill, I think it's something which you have to respond to as creator. And if you have to respond, that alone pulls your army over here and maybe allows Nurture to kind of dictate the way the next few moments go. These couple of Archons go down very quickly. The Storms arrive, and that is what's going to push Nurture back. Nexus took some more damage, now down at 250 health, but still alive, still kicking, and still being mined from. Somehow, some way, this Nexus has just been an absolute tank this game. And as now we have... Oh, Nurture is still desperate to make something happen here. More Lings will reinforce it. He has the gas to make some Banes. He's actually got the Grey Spire coming in, so that's something I didn't see the Hive. I saw the Spire, but didn't see the Hive. I wasn't actually thinking about the idea of just straight up going Greater Spire. But obviously, the Greater Spire makes this a very... Uh, well, a very plausible sort of attack, as we do see Lings, Hydra's Banes. They're going to be gathering up on the center here over the next couple of moments. Getting ready to go. 
There you go. Great spy finishes up, and we do have Nurture coming over to the left hand side. Splits up just a little bit. Deals with that of Phoenix right there, and we are going to be seeing, of course, now Creator. He's trying to take a fifth base, which is where this becomes even more difficult for him, because now he has to be able to spread his army even more to be able to defend. It gives Nurture more positions to attack into. Follow that said, with the Brood Lords out, obviously Nurture's army is a bit more immobile. Maybe Creator's actual issue is just the ability to fight against Brood Lords. He hasn't been able to tech up in towards an air army or anything along those lines. As we do see the Lingus Hydras continue to come around here. And uh, again, a few more bands just coming up in towards the center of the map. A few Brutes coming up as well. We're going to be approaching this uh, third base right now, so third base potentially in some trouble. Adrenal Glands currently on the way out of this uh, spawning pool. So Adrenal Glands coming through over here. You now we're going to see the Brood Lords are starting to drop on down, work their way against that Thornton Cannon. A few Banes and Hydras also as we're going to be seeing this collection together. Banes are wanting to run into that army. I mean, Creator's been very patient about this in terms of what he's doing. Nurture too though, I mean keeping so many of his Banes back with 16 more on the way. Creator's just going to give up this base which is terrifying because this base is so low. Now you can kind of see why he wants to go and counterattack, but Nurture, he sees this. Maybe it wasn't a counterattack that was intended. Maybe it was just the idea of flanking this army. I have to say that Nurture loses a lot of the Banes on kind of Archons and so on, but that said, that's a great catch on the right hand side. He's going to catch all of these Immortals with Zerglings. And the Immortals just don't deal that well with those units on their own. They need the support. And Kred, as he gets backed away into a corner, it looks as though this is just going to be a little bit too much right now from Nurture as he was really shouldn't have won game number one, if we're going to be honest. Game number two definitely has been Nurgeo's from the get-go. He really did kind of hold the first attack very easily. And from that point, he has just been overrunning again and again and again. Pushing through, that is GG, and Nurgeo takes game number two.